All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning or good evening, uh, wherever you're at. Here it's evening time, 10 p.m. <laughs> uh, so what's new with me? Well, my girlfriend came home from the province. Um, I'll give you some updates with that. And um, we've got some other news going on here. I'll just put out a big greeting uh, for everyone. Hello, and uh, how's everybody doing today? I won't go and individually greet everybody like I used to because a lot of people who watch the replay, they just kind of want me to get into the questions, and uh, I totally get it. That uh, If somebody's watching the replay, and for me to go through and, and greet everybody is just uh, too much. So I'm just going to jump into questions here, but um, I will go ahead and say that uh, my girlfriend was telling me how she went home to the province, and she... Um, she had to get a pass, you know, the buses and, and, uh, V hires, the V hires are vans, uh, that will go around the Island. So those are up and running around Negros Oriental. And, uh, basically she had to get a, uh, go to the barangay captain, uh, kind of the official in charge of like the, uh, neighborhood subdivision or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, she, lets them know what day she wants to travel back to her home city and they write out a pass for her. Now, uh, on the way back home, she had to do the same thing and she was only allowed to come back home on certain days. She couldn't just go home on any day. So she had to get that pass. And, uh, there were several checkpoints. Nobody ever asked for any paperwork or anything. They never, uh, did temperature checks. I think they were just checking to see, that people were spaced out properly. Um, there was only one person per row, I think, in the V hire. Two, Two people in each row. Um, and the V hire normally can hold maybe four people in each row, I think. So they would only allow two, pe two people in each row in the V hire in the van. And uh, they did ask uh, one lady who looked older, they did ask her age and for identification. But other than that, uh, they're, they're not checking temperatures or they didn't ask for paperwork. Looks like they were just concerned about wearing masks, social distancing, and uh, things like that. Uh, another thing, she was telling me how the local barangay is distributing food out now. Uh, King told me that her family in particular, now she's got herself, uh, four sisters. So there's five of them. Uh, the brother's not living there. He's working in Manila, I believe. And, uh, and then she's got a nephew and her mom and dad. And of course the grandfather, and this is per household. Um, her family got, and this is only one time, uh, this only happened one time. Her family got five kilos of white rice, one can of sardines, and some sugar. That was the one-time relief package that went out to her family um, to help sustain them. I mean, I, seriously, five kilos of white rice, one can of sardines, and some sugar. Now, that's that's pretty. That's pretty crazy. So um, I'll go ahead and jump into some questions and then I'll uh, update on some news as well that I, I just uh, read about that I thought was kind of interesting here. So uh, yeah, good evening there. Uh, everything's going well, Brent. Thank you. So uh, Ron, yeah, uh, 51 uh, live streams in a row now. <laughs> you need to get a life. I need to get a life too, right? Life of the lockdown. So yeah, Gang is home. Bachelor life is, is over. Um, will Gang be part of my live stream this evening? No, she's kind of hanging out on the couch and half asleep. I'll, I'll move the camera on you. She, she can say hi. Hello, Gang. <laughs> okay. That's as much as Gang is going to be in the live stream tonight. <laughs> she's just hanging out on her phone. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ron Filipina P was on, on with uh, Paul Old Dog New Tricks today. It's worth watching, Geo. Yeah, I actually, I watched it. So, yep. Um, I don't think she took any video. Like I, like I said before, I, I did the one video of meeting the family. And so that's available to see. Let's see here. So, Chris from New Jersey, how are you doing? So, Ron, Chris, I'm 
I am. You're here, but I'm not allowed out of the house. House arrest for us old guys, 60 and plus, and, and you're over in uh, Dubai. So, Chris, you being 45, you would be allowed out. But here in Dumaguete, I'm only allowed out on certain days. I'm allowed out Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Now, actually, the checkpoints are out, uh, but nobody's really stopping anybody anymore. Um, you're pretty much welcome to go all over the city. Nobody really stops you. Um, the only time they ask for a pass for that Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday is at the grocery store or if you go into the mall. If you don't have a pass for those certain days, uh, you are not allowed to go into the store. And that's only one per household. So, Ging, uh, my girlfriend cannot go with me. So, for example, today she made me a list for the grocery store and I went by myself, went into the grocery store, bought everything I needed. And then uh, we went out together just to stop at the local roadside markets and buy mangoes and avocados and things like that. So, so you want to go over to Toledo, Toledo. Okay. That's over in uh, Cebu area. Yeah. I'm 54 and a half. I just uh, six months more and I'll be eligible for the IHOP senior menu. If it's still in business, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, 45, you'd be okay. You'd need a pass depending on where you're living. I don't know about Toledo. Um, probably, probably similar situation. Do I know Big Ed um, from 90 Day Fiancé? I'm, I'm quite sure I don't know. So Houston, Texas just had their stay at home order extended till mid June. Wow. See here, I really expect things to start to lift maybe around June one. Um, I've talked about this before, but uh, if we go down to what's called modified in uh, general community quarantine, that means pretty much a lot of things will be open up for business. I don't think there'll be a, days won't be regulated probably. Um, we'll probably be able to sit in restaurants again at like 50% capacity. However, I don't think the 60 and older will still be able to come out, which is causing a lot of older foreigners say, maybe I want to get a sweeper flight and, and get out of here. Maybe I want to go somewhere else. Um, so I'm going to catch up on the comments and then I will jump into a little bit of news too. So uh, Chris, you think you're stuck in New Jersey till at least September? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. So, buddy, uh, I'm in Green Bay. Lease is up in August. Looks like I'm headed down to Mexico. You know, uh, that's probably not a bad plan because Southeast Asia, at, um, well, and you'll hear when I update on the news here in a second. Let's see here. So many of you guys here already and the show isn't even starting for a while yet. I thought I was early. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, guys. I'm, I'm glad everybody showed up. Um, um, I didn't do a live stream this morning. I figured I would try to do the weekends in the evenings and uh, see how that works. If, if it's not real successful and I don't have uh, more than a couple hundred people watching, then I'll probably go back to uh, morning times again. But uh, we'll see. So... So, Ron, you were, you're devout now. You were in Bahol for over a year. Honestly, I, I like, Bahol is pretty nice. I'd actually like to take my girlfriend there. She hasn't been to Bahol yet. So, um, if this city, uh, Dumaguete, ends up being in uh, modified general community quarantine and Bahol also does the same, then I would be able to travel over there and we could get a hotel and we could see some tourist sites. And uh, so, We'll see what happens on June 1 here. So, David, Gio, putting the questions first over the greetings is a good idea. Yeah, um, because it's people in the live stream appreciate that I'm greeting everybody. Um, but if you're watching the replay and you're watching the first five minutes of me just greeting people, then, yeah, people want to get into the questions and stuff. So I, I totally get it. Let's see here. Uh, hey, Ed, how are you doing? Uh, just a quick shout out to Ed there. And we got uh, Princess is here. So hello, Princess. 
and uh, Ton from Netherlands. So Buddy says Geo, how are Oriental and Occidental, uh, Occidental different? Um, basically, uh, Negros Oriental speaks Bisayan, and it's half of Negros, and then the northern part of Os Negros, uh, Negros is Negros Occidental, and they speak uh, Ilongo, um, and that's up by uh, Ilo Ilo and uh, Bacalid and up there. So that's really about the, the really the only difference. It's just the island split in half, basically, and they speak two different languages. So, hey, Carlo Paisano, how you doing? Uh, Danny, we complained about the 1,200 stimulus. It could have been rice and sardines. I know. Five kilos of rice, of rice and one can of sardines and a little bit of sugar. And that was a one-time thing. That's supposed to sustain the, uh, the families. <laughs> so, Shannon, does she have multiple bikinis uh, you get to vote on like another did? Uh Nope, I, I don't do that. <laughs> so let's see. Okay. Uh, David, hey, Geo, David Kearns from Rizal. I'm looking for expats for work at home opportunities. I'm located by Lake Laguna. It's raining here. Okay. Um, what kind of work at home opportunities? Let's see here. We got, uh, let's see here, going down to the uh, question. So Jesse, yeah, the Filipino P came out with Paul Old Dog. Awesome. She is becoming popular quickly. Yeah, she has made the rounds. Uh, she's been quite smart about it. She reached out to us and she live streamed with Rike, then she live streamed with me, then Paul interviewed her. Um, she's done the circuit here in Dumaguete, so quite smart of her, really, to market herself like that and uh, to market herself for a Western audience, so for sure. So, hey, Brian, we like our personalized greetings. It's like meeting a friend. The grumpiest can always skip the whole, <laughs> yeah. Well, one way is you can uh, ask me a question and say uh, good evening, and I'll, I'll greet you at the same time. <laughs> so Brent got your stimulus on Wednesday. Well, I did hear that the president said that uh, he is open for another stimulus, and I heard that Mitch McConnell said something about uh, wanting to do another stimulus too, just not what the Democrats uh, propose. So we'll see what happens. So, Chris, they got 20 kilos of rice in Toledo. Wow. See, that's the thing in the Philippines is in one place it'll be one thing, and another place it'll be a different thing. But you know what? We bought our own rice, and we bought our own sardines, so screw them. <laughs> so, uni, uni, 60 plus are allowed to go out for exercise and for essential needs, I heard from the news about a week ago. Yeah. Yeah, wow, rice and sardines was their stimulus check, basically. Um, I did hear some people uh, were getting money here. Uh, I also heard there was a lot of corruption where uh, the barangay captains were keeping it and not, not handing it out. Uh, so, you know, those things happen here in the Philippines. So, so hey, Carlos, so over in Ilo Ilo is the same, yeah. So, how are you doing, uh, Esplana? Esplana Joan, good evening. Watching from Hong Kong. Wow. Awesome. It's a telephone appointment setting using Skype to the Midwest. Huh. Well, maybe, David, you can reach out to me. Maybe I'd be interested in that. We'll have to see. Yeah. They got 20 kilos of rice in Toledo. Wow. So, I guess it just depends. But, yeah, that's, that's amazing. So, hey, Michelle, how are you doing? Uh, my day was pretty good today. Thank you. Okay, so caught up on the comments. We got uh, over 100. Uh, Dave, hello, from Sacramento. And Brian, my girlfriend said they have another new virus case in Mobile. Do you have any confirmed cases in Duma? No, we have zero. So that's why I'm hoping it'll open back up. Um, so Vietnam says, uh, this was just in the news, Vietnam eyes tourism 
uh, revival with select openings for foreign visitors. So it looks like Vietnam's tourism industry is preparing different plans to welcome foreign visitors from countries and territories that have contained the coronavirus pandemic. So my guess is America is going to be out on that. Um, what they did say is, let's see here. Uh, if this happens, Southeast and Northeast Asia will be the first markets to be targeted by Vietnamese's promotion programs in the fourth quarter. Uh, let's see. Uh, they want to control key markets like South Korea, mainland China, Japan, Taiwan, and several other Asian members, uh, ASEAN members, A-S-E-A-N members. Uh, what else here? They could also target uh, Australia and New Zealand, which are responding to the COVID-19 crisis. Says, however, China and Korea are our two biggest inbound sources. Um, Vietnam can consult Australia, New Zealand, and Thailand on opening separate resorts. So that's what we're looking at. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, Malaysia is also talking about the same thing. Again, countries like uh, Italy, Iran, Spain, France, America, probably going to be left out in the cold for a while. You know, a lot of these countries are going to open up, but again, to selected uh, countries. Uh, Brent was wondering if I if had ever been to Tacloban in Leyte. If you had you been to an Italian restaurant called Giuseppe's, Tim K had interviewed the owner and his wife on a video out a couple months ago. No, I, I haven't. Um, I have been to Leyte only one time, and I've only been to one city, and that was Ormoc, but I have not been to Tacloban. So. David, my wife, uh, Maravik, and I are traveling to your neck of the island the end of June. Hope to meet you and yours. Yeah, sounds great, David. Uh, if you can get out here, that would be awesome. We'd be glad to meet up with you. So, uh, go more hike. Gio, where would you go in Southeast Asia if you could travel right now? Well, uh, the plan was to go to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So, if I could go anywhere, that would still be where I would I would go. Um a close second would be Vietnam and Thailand. Yeah, rice and sardines, amazing. What what next? A jar of Vaseline? How are people supposed to survive? I, I know. I, I know. It's horrible. Well, my girlfriend went home with a big box of food, so so that was that was good that she brought them home some food. Let's see here. Uh, Jack, the wife said she was getting 1,000 pesos, but the guy that delivered it wanted 200. She said, get, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, Dave, how strictly the lockdowns are being enforced in big and small cities in the Philippines? Um, they are pretty strict. They're starting to loosen things up a bit here in some of the cities that are under what's called uh, general community quarantine. But the cities, when it was under enhanced community quarantine, it was quite strict. Um, they were stopping everybody at checkpoints. They were doing temperature checks. Um, they weren't, uh, you had to have a pass, only one person per household. Uh, you needed a face mask wherever you went. So it's been pretty strict. And I don't know if you know, but have you heard, but Philippines has one of the fewest cases in the, in the world for COVID-19, but they also have the longest um, and uh, the longest lockdown of anywhere of where anywhere in the world. I just read that. So, hey, one million, how are you doing? Good evening, Gio. The mayor of Davao said she expects many more deaths from COVID, but like the rest of the Philippines, they realize people will starve to death shortly if not opened up. Yeah, I mean it's it's craziness. They, they got to open up, so. 113 watching today, so cool. All right, let's see here. So, hey, Terry, uh, I wonder, though, if we are coming as U.S. citizens from another Southeast Asian country, would we be able to enter Vietnam, Malaysia, etc.? Um, that's a good question, and 
that could be key. So, you know, for example, I mean, I haven't been to the United States in quite a while. So if I traveled from here with the U.S. passport, would I be able to enter? Um, I don't know that yet. Um, I need to ask somebody that. Uh, but we'll, we'll wait and see. I'm sure that uh, when things finally open up like that, they're going to be uh, – they're going to give out that information at that time. So we'll find out what happens here. So, yeah, today we just, um, my, my girlfriend actually brought home a bunch of avocados that she, she got, uh, she brought home some corn. Um, the avocados were, are only 10 pesos per avocado, right? 10 pesos per kilo. Are you sure? 10 pesos? Yeah, my girlfriend says, so 10 pesos per kilo of avocados. I don't know if you guys remember, but um, when I lived in, in the United States, sometimes buying one avocado would cost like a buck, like a dollar fifty or two dollars. It was expensive avocados, but 10 pesos for a whole kilo of avocados. <laughs> That's amazing. So... Hey, Philip. Uh, I love this time for streaming live. I usually just watch replays. Okay, cool. Well, um, hopefully it works out for a lot of people. Um, again, you know, typically I do over 200 watching at one time. So we have 118 in the room, uh, but we've only been going 20 minutes. So we'll, we'll see what happens. And um, if we do get to that number, then I can see streaming at this time on s Saturdays and Sundays. So We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, Reginald, how do you see the Philippines within the next six months? Well, I, I see they're already planning on domestic tourism to really try to get that going. Um, so I don't think that's going to work so well. I think a lot of people are going to just want to get back to work. They're not going to have a lot of money for domestic tourism. We'll see what happens. But um I don't think uh, international tourism will be closed off until next year. I think it'll open up maybe, if I had to guess, I would guess September, October. Um, they just depend on it too much. So we'll see what happens. So Chris, I'm willing to do 14-day quarantine if they let me go there. Well, hopefully. So um, a lot of people are willing to do that. I think most people are willing to do that if they're actually moving here. And they're going to live here. If you're just going for a vacation, then who wants to spend two weeks stuck in a uh, quarantine hotel? By the way, the uh, Philippines expects to be overrun. They're, they don't think they even have enough room with their quarantine facilities because they expect 42,000 overseas foreign workers to be returning back from now through June. Um, that's a lot of people. And each of those individuals need to quarantine for 14 days. So make guacamole. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be buying some chips and making some homemade guacamole. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got a ton of avocados. Um, you could probably see them in the, there you go. You can see them kind of in the background there. <laughs> but yeah, we got, we got tons of avocados. Okay, so buddy, avocados there, two for a dollar. So um, 10 pesos, you know, 10 pesos is what? Uh, there's 50 pesos to the dollar, 10 pesos for a whole kilo. So Ed, yeah, New York City avocado, two for $5. Yep, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So 10 pesos for a whole kilo, it's uh, insane. So hey, Mark, thank you for uh, being a YouTube member as well. Uh, hey, Carl. Uh, hey, Joe. Who goes first when you both flash your lights at an intersection? You know what? They have no, uh, they don't have uh, yield to the right or anything like that. Um, or who, It's basically who arrives first. And what you do as you're approaching the intersection, you also honk your horn to make people aware that you're going through the intersection. So, yeah. Uh, and, you know, I was a claims adjuster, and so it kills me to watch the all the traffic laws broken. And, and in my head, I'm always like, oh, that's that guy's fault. But you know what? Here, 
th those rules don't apply. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. Okay. So Chris, you're moving there. Yeah. Yeah. Jack, a, a buck 50 each. So, I mean, imagine 10 pesos, which is like, um, what is that? Like 20 cents or so 20 cents for a whole kilo of avocados. It's, it's insane. So, uh, here outside of Manila, my wife and I have been to, out to the grocery store once since lockdown lifted. Uh, just the, the one time, huh? Uh, we purchased our disinfectant, disinfectants and masks from janitorial supply stores. You know, uh, we actually will go out and we like to purchase a lot of our stuff just at, um, you know, the little markets, the little outdoor markets. Like today we went and bought mangoes. Um, the mangoes were 70 pesos for a whole kilo of mangoes, which is basically like a dollar twenty or so for a whole kilo of, of mangoes. Um, we buy our onions, our garlic, our potatoes, all these, uh, all the vegetables and fruits, things like that, fish, um, seafood. We buy that all at uh, outdoor markets. And then for everything else, we just go to the grocery store. So, Hazen, I don't think they will let you into Vietnam from from us, according to my Vietnam friends. Good to hear you doing good, Gio. Yeah, uh, that's the thing is um, I still have the American passport. And even though I came from the Philippines, they may not care. It just may be an automatic um, disapproval if you're coming from or I mean, if you have that American passport, unfortunately. So. Hey, Chris, thank you very much for the uh, super chat. I appreciate that. So, Philip, please send me 10 kilos of avocados. Thank you. You could literally, for like a dollar, you could just, you could make um, just boatloads of, of uh, guacamole. It's crazy. Let's see here. Uh, Reginald, I plan on retiring there, so when I come, it's for good. I have a house there where my fiance is residing in now. Very cool. So, dollar fifty each avocado here in Canada. Yeah, it's uh, avocados are expensive over in the West. Buddy trip. Yeah, twenty cents for two point two pounds of avocados. <laughs> I know it's it's crazy. Yep, Brent, traffic in the Philippines, there are no rules. They just pile into each other. It's it's insane. You just, um, like, to get across the intersection in Dumaguete, you just kind of pull yourself out, and you see one little break, you just pull out in front of people, and they'll, they'll stop. That's just the way it is. So for people going to Southeast Asia for the time, or second or third time, which country do you think people should try? Um, I think Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia gets passed up a lot, and I think a lot of people would really like it. There's a lot of cool sites, um, English, uh, you know, it's it's quite nice, beautiful parks. Um, I think people should uh, check out Vietnam and check out uh, Ha Long Bay, which is a really nice spot. Thailand, I like uh, Krabi, K-R-A-B-I. So those are some good spots. That's why there's no auto insurance here. Yeah, true statement. <laughs> so there is no 10 peso avocado. Unbelievable. No, um, 10 pesos for a kilo, right? Yeah, it's back in the office. Yeah, she got it directly from the farm? Neighbor, yes. Oh, okay. So her neighbor grows avocados and sold it for and was selling the avocados for 10 pesos per kilo. Or 10, depends. Yeah. Yeah. And this was in bio one. So. So Reginald, uh, with all the overseas workers returning, how can the Philippines infrastructure handle all the people returning? Well, and they, they depend on so much of these remittances coming into the country. Um, yeah, it's, they're, they're going to be in for a world of hurting. They may not feel it right now, the second, but when they don't have all those remittances coming in, oh, yeah, they're going to feel it, so for sure. 
So uh, Jim and Rose's adventure in Manila. Uh, my wife just bought one ton of avocados, one ton. They will be delivered on a truck tomorrow during her time off when she is not teaching school. She does a lot of vegetables and fruit wholesale selling. Okay, very cool. Oh, yeah, avocado in Cebu City, 100 to 120 pesos per kilo. Oh, my God, that's expensive. Um, here, normally in Dumaguete, we spend about 40 pesos per kilo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we spent like 40 or 50 per kilo, right? Some are 70. Yeah. So usually here in Dumaguete, we're spending anywhere from 40 all the way up to 70 per kilo. How many avocados in a kilo? I don't know. How many avocados do you get in a kilo, do you think? It depends the size, but if you have the medium size, like four pieces. Four? Four to five. Four to five. Um, four is big, it's big enough, four is enough. Yeah, four to five avocados per kilo. Oh, yeah, we like Krabi, Thailand, and Bali. Um, Bali, by the way, is looking to open up by July 1. I just put that article on my Geo in the Philippines Facebook page. Um, Bali wants to open up to tourists by July 1. Again, will America be left out? I don't know. <laughs> so, Steve, hi, Geo. Desperate to get to Vietnam from Manila w when they open up. Do you think they will take into account where you flew in from? or just by the country of your passport before granting a visa? I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I keep checking the uh, articles. I do have a Vietnamese uh, lady friend that works over in Vietnam and she works in, uh, she works processing visas. So I actually have uh, emailed her and asked her that exact question and she doesn't know yet. She's going to let me know as soon as she knows something. So I'll let you know when I know something. But uh, I don't know yet. So, Dave, a few tribal casinos and shopping malls just opened up past few days with strict virus protocols in California. Yeah. Okay. Sean, it also depends on who has the bigger balls to put their car out in an inter intersection to see if people stop for them or crash into them. Wild West out here. <laughs> Wild West for sure. Absolutely. Uh, pickle beaker, <laughs> how readily available are stuff like lentils, oats, chickpeas in the Philippines? Uh, chickpeas, um, I see, I see them a lot in the uh, stores. Um, lentils, I haven't really looked, so I don't know. Um, oats, um, just the, just the store brand, the major Quaker, you know, Quaker oats, that type of thing. But other than that, I don't see too much. Uh, buddy trip, do you carry your passport with you or a photocopy? I, I never carry my passport. It stays locked up at home. I make a photocopy. And of course I have, um, my alien certificate of registration card in my, I have a Philippines driver's license too. So yeah. So princess stay home. <laughs> okay. Well, if you're under um, general community quarantine, I think it's okay to go out. Um, I mean, we have no cases here. So, David, do local farmers use pesticides and herbicides when growing veggies? King, does your dad use pesticides and chemicals when he grows? Yes. Because the soil is like, depend on the fertilizers. Because if you don't add uh, fertilizer, Fertilizers, the, the, the plant didn't grow well. Hmm. She says, yes, they they're, do. They're but there are, there are places that do sell organic. Yes, so, the yeah, the, which is, I, I'm with you. I, I kind of prefer the organic stuff myself. I don't like all the pesticides and chemicals and stuff. The differences between the harvest. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there is no 10 Philippine peso avocado. That's very insane. Uh, Michelle, again, it was her neighbor who's a farmer who sold her a kilo of avocados for 10 pesos. So that might not be the norm. Again, here in Dumaguete. Yeah, and that's in the deep province. 
Um, but again, here, like in Dumaguete, it goes for 40 to 70 pesos. I've seen them for 40 pesos per kilo uh, at the road, on the roadside. And I've also seen them for about 70. So. <laughs> Geo to Vietnam. Sorry, sir, you're out of stock. Yeah, no doubt. You hear that all the time, right? All the time. So. Uh, David, the U.S. Embassy has announced several flights back to the mainland via Guam in two weeks. I think I'm staying here. Yeah, they have. My friend actually just left Davao. He took the sweeper flight out on the 21st. The whole thing cost him $1,900. $1,900 to get back home, which is twice the amount of that he would normally pay. Yeah. So is the BI open now in Duma? Yes, they are open. Um, however, they are just, um, they're just uh, handling emergency visas and things like that right now. From what I understand, they're not handling regular visas. That's what I was told. So Gomer Height, Kuala Lumpur, vacationing, they're expensive? No, no, not, not really. Um, I've not read up on Malaysia. Safety level, completely safe. Very, very safe. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Dave, do you know which Southeast Asian countries will be the easiest destination for Ging to get out of the Philippines immigration? Uh, Dave, probably Malaysia will be probably one of the first ones. Uh, Thailand's not good. Vietnam's not as easy. Um, but Malaysia is probably one of the easier ones. Maybe Singapore even. So, yeah, the Siemens, they pay themselves the, the hotel and quarantine great deal for the government. Yeah. So, Mark, Russia has over 3,000 cases with only 3,000 deaths. Every other country has at least eight times higher death rate. Can't really trust these numbers. Or Vaca's solution. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Randy, why are so many OFWs returning? Is the host country kicking them out? Um, well, two things. One, um, these jobs are drying up. They, uh, it, these jobs are like shut down. You know, they're not open like the hotel or the restaurant or uh, the nanny. They don't want them there. Um, they're trying to save money because they themselves, their, their um, income is drying up a bit. So, yeah, their first thing that goes is their extra help. Their nanny goes. Um, their um, extra workers from overseas because people now are, are countries are struggling. So they're sending them all home. They're all losing their jobs. And uh, some of the teachers in Thailand haven't worked in like uh, seven weeks. Um, so yeah, it's crazy. So Carlos, you can, you buy in the central market. I love that market. Yeah, I, I go there. Um, we also go, um, out in the neighborhoods, there's a lot of little roadside um, vendors set up, and it's even cheaper there. That's where you want to buy is the uh, vendors that are selling on the roadside. That's the cheapest that we find usually. So, Steve, uh, if we have the quarantine in Vietnam or Cambodia, do you think we can choose to do it in a hotel rather than a camp center if we are willing to pay for it? Um Cambodia, I wouldn't fully trust, but Vietnam, I know it would probably be a decent hotel. So I think you would be fine in Vietnam, but Cambodia, I don't completely trust. So, Paul, hey, Gio and gang, I bet you're very happy to be back together. Did she have a full fulfilling time with her family? I'm sure she did. Yeah, she was there for, I think, 10 days. So, yeah, she, she enjoyed it. She was um, there helping with the, uh, you know, she's, her parents uh, have a farm, and so she was helping out on the farm. And um, she likes to garden and stuff, so she was like weeding and planting seeds and growing flowers. And uh, they had a, uh, a your neighbor had a party, and they had lechon baboy. Yeah. Yeah, they had the uh, lechon baboy. You know, the roasted pig. That's a big deal here in the Philippines. So. Uh, X, Y, Z, A, B, C heading to a farmer's market here in Arizona has avocados. Uh, I always miss in the Philippines. The ones from Mindanao aren't as good. Yeah. Um, the ones here in uh, Negros are, are quite good. 
I, I really like them. I used to take, um, so I would take an avocado and I would put balsamic vinegar in it. Anybody else ever eat an avocado like that? You put like some sea salt, some basal balsamic vinegar and eat it that way. Quite good. Sean, uh, get the passport ID card. It's $30 and has the same info as your passport. It looks like a driver's license. Very handy. Yep, absolutely, Sean. Uh, that is a good option. Also get the passport with the extra pages too. So uh, VW and Tiny, they use a lot of pesticides in the Philippines, not to mention the widespread pollution. Absolutely. Totally true. And uh, you can find organic here though, um, but uh, it's harder to find. So absolutely true. Buddy, what kind of interesting foods did you discover in the Philippines? Fruits, veggies, fish, et cetera, et cetera. Do any of them grow wild? Um, there's a variety of uh, different fruits that I found here. Um, mangosteen is one of my favorites. Um, it's like a little purple fruit that you open up, and it's got these white seeds with the flesh that you can eat off of it. Um, Atis is interesting. Um, Lanzonas, I really like Lanzonas. Uh, jackfruit, um, there's really some interesting fruit out here. Just some really, um, pomelo I like a lot. Um, the, the different varieties of mangoes are, are phenomenal. So there's some really good mangoes out here too. So Danny Williams, uh, girlfriend had me planting organic vegetable plants yesterday, one hour from downtown Manila. Well, that's the way to go, <laughs> for sure. Let's see. So William, I'm sure that's good to have your girl back home. Has she cooked you something good to eat? Both take care. Well, yeah, she actually made me... Uh, uh, fried chicken. We used olive oil, by the way, <laughs> and uh, mashed potatoes. And uh, and then we went out and the avocados aren't quite ripe yet, but we got a bunch of mangoes and stuff. So yeah, things are good. Okay. So Philippines has imported oats from Australia. Good prices. I saw it in uh, Super Lee in Duma. Yeah. Um, I, I always just get the Quaker oats stuff, but, uh, yeah, I think they do have pretty good oats. Yeah. Yeah. I watch, uh, Vagabond, uh, Buddha. He does Malaysia travel info vids. Yeah. I haven't checked them out yet, but, uh, yeah, I might have to. So 80 pesos per kilo in Elo Elo. Yeah. Let's see here. Okay. There we go. So, Danny, buddy, uh, try milkfish. Yep. Uh, moringa. Jackfruit. Uh, I, I can't pronounce that last one, but I've had that. Guyabano. Guyabano. Uh, Hayden, are the Filipinos you talk to worried about the economy? Uh, they are for sure. I, I mean, a lot of them have lost their jobs already. Um, several restaurants that I know are already going out of business. So yeah, for sure. I, I, they definitely are worried. Um, they're pretty resilient though. They are used to hard times here. You know, I think much more than Americans. Yeah, OFWs are 8 to 9% of the GMP of the Philippines. Yeah. Michelle, Gio, why Western guys like Filipinas? Just curious. Well, I guess every guy is going to be a little bit different, but I would say I like Filipinas for their femininity. Um, I like them for their values. Uh, I like their character. You know, they're very happy, happy-go-lucky, uh, always smiling usually. Um, very loving and attentive women. So me personally, that's what I like about them. Um, I'll let the other guys comment as well. Can I buy frozen milkfish here because of the Hmong? Any good? Um, I can buy frozen milk. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, the Hmong are, aren't they up in the, uh, like, Cambodia, 
near Laos or something like that. I can't remember. There we go. Yeah, Michelle, because Filipinas are some of the most beautiful women in the world. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey, Stephen, how you doing? Organics starting to get popular. It's starting to catch on. Um, again, though, it's a little bit pricey for people, so they can't really afford it. I think a lot of them would like to. They know uh, they're reading, they're online, they're, they're reading about uh, the pesticides and how it's better to be organic. So they're certainly aware of it, but uh, I don't think a lot of them can, uh, you know, afford it. So have you been through Laos? I have not. Um, how would you describe the safety level? Yeah, unfortunately, I have not been to Laos. My friend has been to Laos. He said it was safe. He, he enjoyed it. He liked it. But um, I, I have not been uh, through Laos yet. On my list. <laughs> so, Philip, I love Lechon Baboy. I was in Subic uh, Bay in 1980s. We had two 400-pounders. Such an awesome weekend party. Yeah, um, Lechon is good. It, it's really good. Also, yeah, lots of Filipino cruise ship staff lost their jobs, too. That, that's absolutely true. So Philippines is famous for a lot of things, but late term, but boy, yeah. So you grow uh, acorn squash in our garden, strawberries as well. Um, I used to, when I was a kid, we used to go out and pick blueberries, raspberries, blackberries just out in the wild. You know, you could always tell that if they were wild because they would be a lot smaller than the store-bought ones, which would be like super size. But yeah. So Jocelyn, hello. How are you doing? So Brian says, Michelle, because they are complete opposite of Western girls. They look and act like proper girls, feminine. Very, very true point. So... Stephen, I wonder if the Airbnb condo buildings will be open to letting foreigners back even after the restrictions are lifted. That's um, a good question, but uh, you would think they would want to. Yeah, like how Rike had to move so many times before the restrictions were official. Yeah, he had a he had a bounce around and he barely got into that condo before they, um, uh, you know, they were almost literally out on the street. So yeah, it was a pretty close call. So living blank, Ging's family has a farm. Do they also have a piggery or is it just fruits and vegetables? Um, you guys don't have pigs, right? Chickens, only chickens, right? Your farm only has chickens. Uh, just chickens. Do you mean animals? Yeah, animals. Yeah, carabao, goat, cow. Carabao, goat, cow, dogs. Well, you don't need dogs, but <laughs> 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 but yeah. <laughs> She's just over here listening to music on her phone, so. Yeah, a lot of uh, among in Green Bay, also in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Yeah. A lot of guys like Marina girls for sure. Yeah. Hey, Scott, how are you doing? Good morning. Any major news I miss? Um, well, uh, we have Bali, uh, Indonesia says they want to open up tourism again starting in July. And uh, Vietnam wants to start opening up tourism pretty, pretty soon as well, but only to select countries, probably meaning uh, part, most, most of the parts of Asia and New Zealand, Australia, but, uh, like America, probably no talk about that as of yet. So. Tiller Craig, what's the best way to make and get phone calls from the U S? Um, there's a variety of different ways. There's Google, um, there's Skype, which is what I use. Uh, Skype, you can, you can, Call all the 1-800-1888 numbers for free that you want. Like if I have to call my bank, um, credit card, uh, a travel company, whatever, 
as long as it's a 800 or a 888 number, 877, all of that is free on Skype. You just um, dial it. Uh, you won't have a phone number, but you can pay Skype to have a phone number and get messages, uh, text messages and everything. And you can also do that with Google. There's Magic Jack. There's a Magic Jack uh, app that you can download and you can utilize that as well. So, David, United Airlines filed for bankruptcy Friday. Wall Street Journal says Delta and American will file for protection next week. Yep. How many times have they gone bankrupt? Jeez. So, Mark, uh, it's easier to make a Filipina happy than a Western woman. Filipinos are more appreciative of being treated in a good way and less into appearance only. Yep, they are for sure. Absolutely. So, hey, King, how you doing? Hey, Gio, what a day. Live stream, watching Do More Life, Zoom meeting for four hours, editing a video, taught some classes, hung out on Miss V's live stream, 90 minutes, chat with my girlfriend, and hanging out with all of you cool kids here. <laughs> well, very cool. Yeah, Filipinos make excellent wives here in the U.S. Uh, as long as they don't become westernized. Yeah, and as long as there's not a huge age difference, they usually have a pretty good success rate. So <laughs> leave Ging alone. She's too tired to talk. Yeah, she's she's a bit tired. She's just playing on her phone. Hello, King. <laughs> she's <hot. laughs> she's shy. She's she's hiding. Um, Danny, didn't the airlines already get bailout money in America? I thought they did too, but, uh, I'm not, I'm not too sure. So pickle beaker, Dr. Doom Rubini says we are entering an L shaped unprecedented world recession, but also says emerging Asian economies will do better than developed ones might be more fun in the Philippines after all. Yeah. Crazy. Um, I, I'm really actually quite surprised there has not been a second stimulus. Um, really actually surprised they didn't go into a monthly payment thing, to be honest. I mean, 1200 a one-time payment really doesn't, it was a Band-Aid. You know, it, uh, it really didn't do a whole lot for a lot of people. Uh, expat uh, tomatoes are very hard to grow in the Philippines because of the heat. Also, the big problem with blight and other diseases, if you're coming over, get some seeds called wild Everglade tomatoes. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Joe, un United did not file false information. Okay. So he says United didn't file. Uh, Chris, what time is it there now? Curious. I'm in Finland. Uh, here it is 10.53 p.m. 10.53 p.m. So. So text now app is free for phone calls and texts and get any U.S. area code you want. Need to have good internet to use. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Text now. I'll have to look into that. It's interesting. Kiana Foster, what does it mean for a Filipina to be westernized? Um, well, I suppose that means uh, that she has become like a Western woman with her thinking as far as, um, you know, just uh, the feminist, feminist, you know, things like that. I'll, I'll let other people answer. I won't go on, on that subject too long. Hertz filed for bankruptcy. I saw that. Um, I saw the Pier 1 Imports is going out of business, all 582 stores or whatever. Um, I heard Victoria's Secret and another store are closing like tons of shops. So crazy. Uh, variety Wild Everglade tomatoes grow very well here in the Philippines. You can get the seeds um, online in the States. Online, I think that's what you meant. So, Michelle, Ging is just like me. I like taking care of animals and make vegetable garden, too. That's nice for a Filipina. Yeah, she, she enjoys it. She, she likes it. I think she would very much like to have her own garden and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, me personally, I wouldn't mind having my own garden as well. So, yeah, they can be grown in Baguio or Tagaytay. Um, 
Also, strawberries can be grown there. When you, when you, most Filipinos grow their own organic vegetables as most couldn't afford insecticides. Yep, that's that's true. Philip, uh, exactly 12 hours different from the East Coast. Yeah, so in New York, it would be 10.55 a.m. right now. Yeah. <laughs> you really don't know, Kiana. <laughs> yeah, talking about the difference between... Uh, if, if a woman becomes westernized, what does that mean exactly? <laughs> well, we got 166 watching, so good. I, I haven't hit the more than 200 that I normally do in the morning, so um, we'll see what happens here. Uh, Lesman, Gio, when will international travel be allowed in the Philippines again? Um, uh, again, I, I don't know exactly. <laughs> um, they want to open up domestic tour tourism very shortly. And I think that's a good sign. And I think if things go well, um, I'm guessing a few months after that. So my guess would be September. That's just a guess. I don't know. And it, it could mean that America's left out and, uh, you know, just countries and other, you know, maybe Australia, New Zealand, Canada, um, other parts of Asia, South Korea, China again, perhaps. But uh, America could be left out. We'll see. Let's see here. Uh, expat prepper. Also, zucchini will not grow over here. You have to grow a bottle gourd instead. It's almost the same thing. Huh. Yeah, see, I, I didn't know that either. I saw a mem that showed a guy laughing out loud watching the airlines lose billions daily after they charge me $30 for a carry on. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, Scott, Gio, what's the word on your job? Well, I, I have it. Um, it's back on again. It's just a matter of uh, processing a visa and getting over there. So it still could be months away, but we'll see. But good news though, because they contacted me and, uh, and said me it's there and they can work on processing the visa. Uh, Corman, uh, 754 here. My impression is the Republicans rejected the Democrat plan as it appeared to be oriented towards bailing out states that have ill-managed their budgets for decades past. Yeah, I, I figured that, but they do. I know they had talked about wanting to pass something, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Westernization is the ruination of Filipinas, <laughs> developing a selfish, uncaring, unloving, and unappreciative attitude and getting a headache when that suits them. Yeah, that could be it. <laughs> so, Mr. B61, uh, importation of vegetable seeds of rootstock without prior approval is illegal. Sure, you can smuggle a few seeds, but if they see packs, you might be in trouble. Yeah, um, that's that's a true point. That is true. Yeah, Philip, I, I I do. A lot of people just don't realize I come in. I come on this uh, at this time now. So yeah, they uh, they'll get used to it. I'll 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 let them know. And uh, I mean, we got 170 in the room, so we're doing pretty good. So yeah, it'll grow for sure. So. Expat, uh, on my farm, we make our own organic insecticide using the neem leaves from the neem tree in my Vitamix mixer. Interesting. I didn't know that you could even do that, but that's really cool that you can do that. That's interesting. Just going to take a drink of water one second here. All right, Dana Jones heard July, but then flight prices haven't went down. Yeah, I I don't think July is going to happen. Um, I think July is going to be domestic tourism at best. So I would bet you have more watching on Sunday night like last week. Yeah, let's. So I'll I'll be doing the same time on Sunday tomorrow at ten o'clock as well. So yeah, we'll we'll find out. <laughs> So 
So Dave, all the car rental companies ran out of room and had to park their huge inventory of cars at various sports stadiums. That's insane. That's that's insane. Ron, Filipinos are not bossy, at least not my girlfriend. That is a biggie for me. Yeah, I, I totally. <laughs> they they aren't bossy at all. That, that is true. Uh, my ex was very bossy. Constantly wanted to yell and argue, but Filipinos, no, that's not the case at all. Philip, if I move to Kuala Lumpur, can I hire a Filipina uh, to have her stay long time? That's a good question. That's one that I, I really don't know, but um, I know there are a lot of Filipina nannies there and uh, a lot that work in hotels and restaurants, so... It's not out of the realm of possibility. So, oh, you still have to wait so many months to go to Malaysia. Yeah, probably looking at two to three. Yeah, so it's, it's still going to be a little while. <laughs> there we go, Mark. Sex in the city. Watch a couple of episodes to see what westernized means. <laughs> yeah. So if OFWs are 8 to 9% of the GDP and international tourism is 25% GDP, they'll have to open it up. Domestic tourism won't bring any dollars in. No, it won't. Uh, the locals don't have any dollars to spend. I agree with that because uh, especially now, they try, they're going to open things up and try to attract domestic tourism. They're, they're going to get hardly anybody. Um, people just want to get, get to work and have jobs and... Uh, Go, you know, let things go back to normal. I think it's going to be very hard for them to travel. Uh, Brian, have you researched the visas available for both you and Ging yet? Just wondering how long you can stay without leaving Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, well, I'll talk about that uh, for, for a quick minute here, Brian. Um, okay, so for Americans, or, or actually you could be from Canada, Australia, I believe, um, you can go into Kuala Lumpur and you get 90 days, no visa required whatsoever. You could then take a uh, bus ride down into Singapore, spend a night, come back and do it again and get six months. Now, after that, they, they might refuse you entry if you try to do that again for a third time. Um, however, that's just being there like as a tourist. So if you wanted to go there and see how things are. Now, me, I would be getting a work visa. So completely different. Uh, Ging would come over on a tourist visa and she would find either a job or, or I could send her to school and she could take some classes and get an education visa. Filipinas would get 30 days upon arrival, no visa required for Malaysia. They could also do the same thing. She could take a bus ride into Singapore, come stay 24 hours, come back and get another 30 days, giving her 60 days. Um, so th that's basically it on the uh, visa for the Kuala Lumpur. There's, there's other visas that uh, I could certainly get into, but uh, we'll, we'll try to stick with the Philippines here tonight. <laughs> Let's see here. Lesman, I really don't see how the Philippines can survive without tourism. I, I don't either. I, I don't either. So that's why, that's why, initial reports were saying that it wouldn't happen until next year. I don't see that happening. I see it opening way before that. So we'll find out here. Um, we'll see what happens. Sorry about that. Uh, Brent, I think when all opened up for international travel, the airlines, especially the U.S. base, will nickel and dime passengers to no end. $5 at least for a pillow, $3 for a soda, beverage, etc., and still be bankrupt. So, David, Malaysia has the 45th largest population in the world, 32 million. That doesn't seem to be overcrowded. 
No, it's not. Um, Kuala Lumpur was not crowded at all, in my opinion. Yeah, James, 90-day visa. Well, in, in, you don't even need a visa. You get 90 days before you, you visa-free. Yeah. So, Stephen, I want to spend my money in the Philippines, Geo. Let me know uh, so I can bolster the economy there. <laughs> hey, when I know something, you'll know something for sure. So, uh, living blank Filipinos know the price on vegetables, and if an item is one peso higher, they will not buy it. I think it will be very hard to try and raise just organic vegetables because you would have to charge more. Yeah, for sure. Um, my girlfriend knows all the time. We'll stop someplace and she'll be like, oh, that's too much. She knows exactly which fruit and vegetable stands to stop at. She knows the price of all of it. So it's fantastic. Um, there is a good uh, sign of a good Filipina. If you have a Filipina girlfriend and she doesn't like ask the price and she just lets you spend whatever at the for the fruits and vegetables or a tricycle ride or whatever, um, a good Filipina is going to be like, oh, that's too much. We should let's let's go look over here, or no, that we shouldn't we shouldn't be paying that much. If they don't say anything and they just let you spend, um, that could be a warning sign, a red flag. Okay, David, uh, you, you sent me the uh, story by messenger. Very cool. Hey, we might hit the two hundred after all today. We got one eighty seven. So, see what happens. Uh, Ron, will us old guys be able to fly if they need to? Uh, they need to get to another province if they open up domestic travel. If they open up domestic travel, Ron, my guess is the older guys are still going to be locked away. That's my guess. Um, I I don't think it's going to happen. We'll see. We'll see. I think it's totally ridiculous, but um, we'll see what happens. Uh, Robert, Gio, can you live good on 1600 US in Malaysia? Yeah, you could live pretty well on 1600 for sure. Yeah, it is going to be a little bit, um, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than uh, the Philippines in the province areas. Um, but I think it's well worth paying a little bit more. Uh, James, I'm waiting for the countries to open. I love the whole, but now you got me wanting to go to Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, I mean, check it out. A lot of people won't like it. Um, a lot of people will love it. So, so pickle beaker, Malaysia is very uh, anti-Semitic, uh, not welcoming, welcoming to Israels and Jews. Hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Dave, I think you and Rike are correct that Western women have become so righteous and pushy. I don't see any feminism in them. No, I, I hardly do either. What was the traffic congestion like in Kuala Lumpur? How long were you actually there as a number of days? Um, I've been there two times, Brian. First time I went there for my uh, first job. Um, I went there... When I was working in Cebu, they sent me there, and uh, I was only there five days. So I only hung out in Kuala Lumpur. I checked out a lot of the tourist sites. I hired a guy uh, for two days, and he took me around and showed me all the different places, um, which was very cool. Um, the second time I was there, I was only there for four days. I had planned on being there longer, but I got the word that the Philippines was going to lock down and I didn't want to be away from my girlfriend. So I got back in on the last flight or the last day that I was able to travel in the Philippines before the lockdown. So, yeah. Uh, Michelle, which one is the best to live when you meet Western guys want to marry Philippine? Philippines or his country? Michelle, honestly, I'm going to say it's better to stay here in the Philippines. Unless you're very close together in age and you know you want to have, a, you guys both want to have kids together, then it might be a bit different, but I personally think the Philippines. So, Scott, Gio, uh, Do More Life said yesterday that you have to download the tracking app to go in the mall. Is it the same there? No, not here. Here they're not doing any of that. They don't have the technology or the money to put out 
apps like that here. So, yeah. Um, Brian, it's hard for you old guys. How will it be for us antique guys? <laughs> yeah. Charles, you want to check out Kuala Lumpur too? Like, like I said, um, English is spoken there. It's very modern. It's very clean, very organized. The infrastructure is better. Um, dating is not going to be as good. Um, however, you will have a large Filipino population that lives there working in Kuala Lumpur, um, working in hotels and restaurants and as nannies. So you could very easily meet a Filipina if that's what you want. Or... Meet a Filipina in the Philippines and take her there. It's always an option, too. Edwin, how do I like balut? I, I've had it one time, Edwin, and I do not like it. And it's not that it tasted so horrible. It's just the whole, kind of, um, what is it, the uh, the way it looks, you know, and, and the the look and the feel of it while you're eating it, you know, the feathers and all and the beak, it's kind of nasty. Yeah. <laughs> Geo Filipino people are, are still able to get into the country from the U S yes. If, um, if she is a, or he is a Filipino passport holder, then you can get into the country. You'll have to do the 14-day quarantine, but you can get into the country. And if you're a spouse of a Filipino, you can get the Bali Kaban uh, visa, and you're able to get into the country as well, also with the 14-day quarantine. Yeah, so 1 million, Michelle, a lot of guys will want you to stay in the Philippines and stay the way you are. See, we're worried that... Uh, that you might change and you might become westernized. And, and that is the whole reason us guys come to the Philippines is to meet a truly Phil, a, a real Filipina who's feminine and uh, still holds on to her feminism. CJ, uh, good question. Um, very good question, CJ. So if you want to stay forever in the Philippines, how would you manage to provide daily means as a foreigner? Well, two answers to that, uh, CJ. One, most of the guys that come out here and want to stay forever are of the older variety. Uh, when I say older, I don't mean like um, crippled and they can't go out and do anything. There are a lot of healthy guys who can do sports activities just like any any young guy but um most of them are of the retirement age i should say so like 62 and older and they're receiving um income from social security or their pension and uh there's a lot of guys that maybe served did 20 years in the military or something or they worked at a company for like 20 30 years and they were able to uh retire early and and draw on a uh, for on a on a pension or something like that. So um, also you have the digital nomad types. Um, I'm kind of a digital nomad type. I teach English online. I'm creating my own teaching English online business, and um, and then I do YouTube, which doesn't really make me very much to be honest. And it's not a reliable source of income, but um, it helps. So, yeah, that's how, and, and most of us, uh, if you work digitally, you, you, you would be making U.S. dollars or Canadian dollars or Australian dollars, and you can live quite well here and provide a better life to a Filipino. And the traffic congestion in Kuala Lumpur, was it as bad, better than Cebu, or worse? Oh, my God, it was nothing like Cebu. Um, they're, they have big freeways, like six lane, you know, you take the, from, you take a taxi from the airport into the city um, to get to your hotel. And it's just like this big freeway, like you're back in the U S just like going at normal speeds. And um, yeah. Uh, Dave, do Malaysian girls date foreign guys who are not Muslim? Uh, let me answer that in two ways. So one, yes, they do. Um, 
They don't necessarily want you to convert over. I, they're kind of like the Muslim light. Like they're not the extreme kind where they're just their eyes showing. But um, so, uh, yeah, I, I know guys who have dated Muslim girls there and they're, they're pretty open to it. Uh, the other thing is you have uh, Chinese Malay, a, a large population of Chinese Malay. Uh, the Chinese Malay are more than open to date Western girls or Western guys. Um, you have the Malay, which would be the Muslim, and you have the Indian. Um, Indian typically won't date Western guys because their families usually just don't allow it. And then you have a large uh, Filipino um, crowd there, and you have a lot of a lot of workers come from all over Asia to work there, and you get a lot of Indonesian that work as housekeepers and nannies there as well. So there's a lot of opportunity to date a lot of bunch of different girls. So, yeah, there you go. Paul saved my money, retired at 55, CJ. So that's uh, exactly. Uh, Edwin, the 14-day quarantine, can you do it at home or in the airport? Um, so, uh, again, Edwin, it depends on how, how, how you come in as. Um, if you come in, uh, for example, you this is what's going to happen in the future here. Um, OFWs, they have to quarantine in a designated area, but in the future, what they want to do is they want to do a swab test when you come in and what they will do is you will be in a quarantine facility for a couple of days while they wait for the test results. If you're positive, they will put you into the hospital and, and then uh, treat you. If you are negative, then you have to do a 14 day quarantine, but you'll be allowed to do that quarantine either at a designated area, or if you have a home, you can go and do it at your home, home quarantine. I don't have any more details uh, other than that as of right now. Okay, so Brian, you, you have a lot of experience. You've been to Kuala Lumpur about eight times. Traffic and pollution is nothing like Cebu City, yep. Whole new experience, infrastructure, amenities, food is way better. Filipino people makes the Philippines what it is. It's a true statement, Brian, because, um, again, if you want dating and friendly people, come to the Philippines. If you, if you want no pollution, no traffic, great infrastructure, English, um, go to Kuala Lumpur or go to other places. So, Ron, Balut, not me. I won't even try it. My girlfriend is a Filipina, and she will not eat it either. I think my girlfriend eats Balut. I'm not sure. So, Brian, I just read that Thailand has jumped into the number three position in the world behind Singapore and Hong Kong for fastest fixed broadband speed. Surprised me. I know it's good, but third best. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Excuse me one second. Uh, living blank. Philippines rely on the tourist dollars, especially from the U.S. Their whole economy is based on tourism. I don't think they will be able to shut out Americans until next year. Well, they also get a lot of tourists from, from China and from South, South Korea. So I know that will be the first place that they open up to, is my guess. So, Michelle, Gio, but I heard there's a big problem of a single mom when he wants to bring her in her country to live forever unless she don't have a kid. Um, there's not a big problem, but if, if she's a single mom and the father is listed on his birth certificate or your son or your daughter's birth certificate, then to take them out of the country can be problematic. Um, if the father is not on the birth certificate, it's much easier from what I've been told. Um, but you'll probably have to get an immigration lawyer and, uh, that does cost a lot of money. So for a single mom, it's certainly harder to get over to the U S or Canada or, or wherever. If you're single, just truly single with no kids, then it's going to be mu a much easier process for you. 
Well, good question, Michelle. So, David, compared to Indonesia's population of 200 million, Malaysia's 30 million is unclouded. Yeah. Well, you know, they're not they're not baby uh, baby factories in Malaysia. You know, they typically just have one or two kids uh, per family. In Indonesia, the Philippines, it's it's not unrealistic for a family to have like 10 kids, you know. Uh, Carl, kind of telling that so many men are fed up with women in the West. They're willing to re relocate to another country just to find a quality woman with traditional values. Right. And they're willing to sacrifice infrastructure, pollution, other things just to go do that. So, yeah, you're you're totally right. So, David, uh, Phuket, Thailand offers three daily nonstops to Perth during... Uh, non-COVID times. Ah. Hey, Fred, welcome. How are you doing? So, Edwin, I have a house in Tacloban, Leyte. Okay, then you should be fine. Um, Edwin, are, I'm assuming, are you married to a Filipina? If you are, it shouldn't be any problem. So, yeah, 221 viewers, so awesome. So I'll be doing this uh, tomorrow night as well at 10 p.m. So I, if you're looking for me in the morning time, Philippines morning time, I won't be here. <laughs> It'll be nighttime. So, David, I enjoy Kuala Lumpur much more than Singapore. I haven't been to Singapore yet, but I like Kuala Lumpur a lot. Um, I really like the night markets. The oh, Man, unbelievable. The, the food, man. You can just go crazy. Absolutely crazy. At the at the food markets, uh, what's KL? It's Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. So, Carlos, I'm working to jump to Kuala Lumpur after this thing is over. I need, I need the uh, to work the visa for my Filipina girlfriend. That's the key. So she's got a couple of choices. She can either work. She can go to school. Um, but yeah, that's the tricky part is for the Filipina. Yep. So CJ living, uh, at living blank Philippines is allied to USA. This is where our source of living comes from. Most of the BPO here in the Philippines are American accounts. Filipinos just prefer American over Chinese employee. Yeah. Um, but, uh, unfortunately we're kind of being shoved out a little bit. Um, I, I don't want to get into a political discussion, but um, that seems to be the case. So we'll see what happens. Next time this year, or this time next year, Gio will weigh 240 pounds. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> God, I hope not. Hey, happy birthday, David. 63 today. Do you think you will have time to do live stream once you're teaching in Kuala Lumpur? I think so. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll work it out. Actually, I'm only going to be working um, 24 hours a week, so it's not um, it's not a ton. I won't be working so much. So, so happy birthday, David! 62 in July for me. Yeah, I will be 49 in July. July 27. Uh, Paul, how easy for is it for your girlfriend to fly to other countries with you? I have a friend who dates a Haitian lady, and she is always getting denied entry to countries they want to travel to. Okay, so you need to stick with countries that have no um, visa requirement. So part of the uh, ASEAN, I always forget how to pronounce that, A-E-S-A-N, uh, part of that, part of the countries here in the Philippines that where that they can travel without visa. I think there's like 60. And so basically, it's not easy for them if they've never traveled and they're younger. It's easier if they do, if they travel with a foreigner, they want to prove that they've been in a relationship for a long time. You want to have pictures of meeting the family, uh, pictures of, or, or uh, screenshots of your conversation going way back 
you know, showing you're in a relationship. Uh, if she's got a job here, it's better. If she's got a bank account with some money in it, it's better. But once she starts to get uh, some travel experience, like one or two stamps in her passport, they tend to let those people through because then they have some activity. They know they've been out of the country and they've come back in. So they have a much better chance. But a first time Filipina traveling out of the country, um, there is always a chance for somebody to be offloaded. Let's see. So Port Dixon, southwest of Kuala Lumpur, has nice beaches. Yeah, Asal, um, uh, oh, there's a Pen Penang or something like that. Penang, I think. So Edwin, I love the Philippines. You're 100% correct. Filipinas are more feminine than American women. There's no comparison if you ask me. I'm retired U.S. Army. Well, awesome, Edwin. Uh, thank you for your service. And uh, Edwin, I was I was in the Army as well. So let's see. Maybe we crossed paths at some point in our life. Who knows? <laughs> Philip, you've been 26, and I've, I have been here for 37 years. <laughs> Brian, I love Kuala Lumpur. My girlfriend loved it there and couldn't believe how clean it was. No trash anywhere. The service also amazed me. It's a real eye opener for Filipinos. I, I know. And um, I want that. You know, I, I like the Philippines. I do. I love the people. I love the friendliness. Um, but again, I'm at this point in my life, I've been going, going on four years here. I'm ready for a better infrastructure, no pollution, a cleaner, healthier living. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, Carl, do you know the wage discount working in Kuala Lumpur compared to the U.S.? Say you're making 100k in the U.S., what would the going rate be in Kuala Lumpur if working for a foreign company, if you know? I, I don't really know, to be honest, Carl. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I only know, um, I don't know if we're friends on Facebook. I don't mind disclosing my income and job offer to you. Um, privately, but I don't want to put it out in the chat room. But uh, if you message me on Facebook, I'm, uh, I'll share it with you. Yeah, good to see some Filipinas on here. Welcome, ladies. By the way, I'm taken. <laughs> uh, Michelle, Gio, I think it's easy for a single mom to look to a Western guy to marry that he likes to live in the Philippines with his girl. Yeah. Um, I think Western guys are much more open to a single mom here in the Philippines than Filipinos are to single moms. So, yeah. All right. 225 watching. So awesome. I was actually thinking this was a, was going to be a low number for uh, people watching, but uh, glad to see so many people here. Thank you, guys. So, uh, Earl, I'm waiting for flights to resume from Canada, and I'll retire in the Philippines and shuttle between Vietnam and the Philippines. So would you just, you would live and retire in the Philippines, but you would just kind of spend time in both places? That's not a bad idea. So, Brian, China has been going strong for 20 years. This COVID thing is going to end that. The world is stacking up against them, except for the Philippines government, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Penang Island. Yeah. Helping Hand Wonders of the World. Hello. <laughs> Interesting uh, profile pic. <laughs> Stay home. Okay. So, hey, Alan, how are you doing? Hey, Gio, I'm Canadian senior, want to visit Philippines. Do I have to have a return ticket to stay longer than three weeks? You want to visit the Philippines. Do I have to have a return ticket to stay longer than three weeks? Uh, you do have to show a ticket leaving the Philippines. Um, the first three weeks, you don't need any visa. You get a visa, uh, a visa waiver upon arrival. Uh, Okay, here, got Luke, Luck, 
Luck or Luke. Hello from Belgium. Hello. So, Dave, there are so many interesting places in Malaysia and Indonesia waiting to be discovered that you and Ging will be delighted to visit. Yeah, I'm totally excited. I'm excited to show her other places too, like Thailand and Vietnam. And yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's at uh, Penang. Uh, Penang is very impressive, very clean, but very quiet. Um, oh, Carl, totally understand. But unfortunately, I deleted Facebook years ago. I'll do some research. Or, Carl, you can email me. You can email me. My email is in the description there. Gurkha, some are only looking for single moms. Yeah, there's actually some Western guys who actually specifically look for, um, you know, a single mom. In fact, I have a friend that specifically is looking for a single mom because he he wants a kid. Um, he can't have kids anymore. And uh, his kids are all grown up. And he actually... You know, because he ended up getting divorced, and of course his wife got full custody, and so he kind of missed that part of his life where he, having a kid, um, you know, watching them grow up, and uh, so he's actually looking for a single mom with a young kid. So there are guys out there that that do look for that. A lot of guys uh, don't want that, and that's totally fine. But uh, there are, there are some guys that uh, that do want that. Uh, Dave, cool. I read that Thailand is doing a pilot program with Stanford University Hospital to quarantine and test in U.S. prior to travel. 500 people in program. Philippines can benefit from something like this. Um, yeah, uh, the only thing, Dave, is it's actually Taiwan, not Thailand. It's Taiwan. Um, I have that newspaper, newspaper uh, article on my Geo in the Philippines Facebook page if anybody wants to read that. So... So, how are you doing? Big shout out to me. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Brian, the first time you take a Filipina out of the country, be prepared to both have an interview to pro prove your relationship. Hostel had to sign a form to guarantee her safety in return after that was easy. Okay, so Brian, the, after that first time, then it was easy to um, leave. Did you have to do paperwork after that or was it just one time? If that's the case, I may have to take Ging to Malaysia just like one time for like like six days or something just for a vacation, come back if that's the case, and then the second time take her out. So, David, uh, the Chinese CCP government is squeezing the Philippines for U.S. dollars. The CCP government is shoving promises of infrastructure investments in exchange for dollars. So Fred, you are again popular. <laughs> maybe, maybe a, a little bit, but not, not too much. So Luke, when I go there, I go to my house and take them, take them right outside of Davao. Yeah. I'm familiar with it. Yeah. See, uh, kids are the best. Uh, thank you, Ian. I appreciate that. Appreciate that, guys. So, hey, Bob, how are you doing? Uh, so, guys, I will go about another 20 minutes or so. So if you guys have more questions, uh, let me know. Um, I'll wrap it up right about the two-hour mark here. Uh, Kevin Doolittle, I'm just hoping that the no visa upon arrival will still be in effect when, when this is all over. I, I would imagine it is. So, Stan, my doctor is a Malay, and she said the Lung Kawi Archipelago is paradise. I don't think it's cheap compared to the rest of the country. Also, Malaysia was a British colony until 1957. Yeah, um, a lot of the parts of the country are not so cheap, but Kuala Lumpur is really not expensive. Uh, by the way, I'll tell you guys a funny story. This happened to me last night. Uh, Ging wasn't home. And as a lot of you guys know, I have a big phobia for spiders. Well, last night I, I'm on the couch and I walk into the bedroom. I open the door to my bedroom. Um, as I open the door to my bedroom, I'm not kidding. The, the, there was a, a little lizard. It must have been hanging on the door or something or right above the door. But as I walked in, the thing dropped on me. 
and I had no idea what it was because the lights were off. So I flipped on the lights and I see the lizard. I look down, I see the lizard fall to the floor and I'm like, oh, okay, it's just a lizard. But it scared the hell out of me. I thought it was a spider because again, as, as if you guys have been watching my channel, you guys know I have a big phobia towards big spiders. I, I don't care about small spiders. I'm not afraid of, but big spiders, I, I've got quite the phobia for. So the lizard drops on my head. I freak out. I look down. I see it's a lizard. And I'm like, okay, no big deal. But I also, as I looked down, I saw a big freaking spider. I think it was one of those, um, uh, I think they're called the huntsmen. They're here in the Philippines. Um, they're harmless. They, I mean, they have, they have some venom, but it doesn't really affect humans. You know, they, they tend to stay away from people and um, they're not really dangerous, but the thing ran behind my um, uh, wall locker, you know, where, where I put my clothes. I moved the wall locker trying to kill it and get rid of it. And the thing disappeared on me and uh, I couldn't find it. So I closed the bedroom door and I slept on the couch because I, I refused to go into my bedroom and uh, sleep with that big, huge spider just wandering around in the bedroom. Um yeah, that, that's how bad I have a fear of uh, big, big spiders because I, I wouldn't even go in the, in the bedroom after that. <laughs> but uh, Ging has been home all day and we haven't seen it. So hopefully it's gone. Hopefully it, it left the house. <laughs> hopefully it doesn't come out in the middle of the night again. But uh, before I step down on the floor, I will be looking. Every time I walk anywhere in the house now, I'm looking on the floor to see if it's around. So... <laughs> Anyway, that's my story. Oh, okay, that's right. You said that. Let's see. Uh, uh, tried searching for your email on, on your about page, but just see links to your Facebook. Uh, oh, okay. I'll, I'll put my email out here. Here's my email. Okay, so... USA, you can't even comment on how a woman looks without catching a case. I like the fact that you can tell a Filipina she looks good without ending up in court. She'll appreciate the compliment. Very good point. Here you can compliment a Filipina and say, wow, your, your hair is beautiful. Oh, you got the most beautiful skin color. Um, you got gorgeous eyes. You know, you can tell her something like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's fine. In the West, they get insulted or, oh, it's sexual harassment. I mean, it's just over the top. So, yeah, Philip, uh, I'm excited to see your Malay vids, Geo. Yeah, I, I'm excited to get out and do something a little bit different other than just the Philippines. So, uh, Brian, the interview was only the first time. Several trips after that were no problem, but sometimes immigration would ask me, a question to confirm what girlfriend had told them, but only Kuala Lumpur was a bit stricter once. Uh, okay. Do they make you sign the paperwork that you're going to return her though after the first time? Just out of curiosity. So we're on a lot. Not all younger Filipinos will want to have a baby. If you are coming to be with one, they are very family oriented. They are indeed. Yep. Uh, Charles Geo for base to live and travel to and from other Asian countries. What do you think? Kuala Lumpur, Thailand, or Vietnam? Well, um, I guess we have to take several factors into, in, into play on uh, what's, who's friendlier on the visa situation, but, um, Vietnam is not a bad place. Vietnam is a good central place, um, cause it's near Thailand and everything, but, you honestly, you can't go wrong with any of those. You could be Kuala Lumpur, Bangkok, or Ho Chi Minh City, and those all three would be a phenomenal central hub to be in just to take cheap flights everywhere. So, yeah. Philip, there are three big ones under the couch. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, this is the second time I've seen one in here. The first time I killed it. Um because I was able to get to it, but this time the thing disappeared on me. I don't know where it went. So, yeah. 
So news mentioned yesterday that a promising vaccine will likely be available at the end of this year, but don't know how they will mass produce. Yeah, good question. Sean, uh, arachnophobia, that's it's exactly, I really do. I, I, I literally am terrified, but of big spiders. Granted, if, if it's a little spider, it, it doesn't bother me. I'll smash it, no problem. But big spiders, yeah. So, uh, 230 in the room today. So awesome guys. Thank you. So 1 million, I came face to face with an Australian huntsman spider. It was, it was that big. It took my beer from me. <laughs> that must've been huge. I don't know how big they get in Australia, but the ones here can be like the size of your face. It's huge. Yeah, no, no problem, Carl. And uh, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll tell you what the benefits are and my salary. I, I don't mind sharing that. Um, that's fine. Ron, the spider is probably more scared of you than you are of it. No, I can guarantee not. So, Brian, I dreamed one night that a spider ran over my face. I woke up, turned on the light, and there was a big spider on my pillow. <laughs> that would freak me out. Was it Was it a big spider, too? Because that, that would terrify me. <laughs> that would totally terrify me. <laughs> yeah, Brian, the spider probably planted eggs. Sleep with your mouth closed tonight. <laughs> well, my girlfriend, Ging, she's not afraid. She's not afraid of those spiders. So, Brian, no, only signed the paper the first time. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. So, practicing for make, making babies is the best. Yeah, absolutely, Philip. I totally agree with that. Practice makes perfect, right? <laughs> uh, James, Gio, where are the province areas in Malaysia? I'm not a big city guy. I love the provinces in the Philippines. You know, uh, James, I'm just not educated enough, uh, well-traveled enough in Malaysia to know yet. I've only been to Kuala Lumpur, but I know you can live right on the outskirts of the city and you'll feel like you're in the province. And the, the good thing about even being in the city there, there are these big, huge parks. It's not overcrowded whatsoever. Um, I really like that. So, Hey, Marley, uh, I agree, Gio. I'm nowhere in my retirement age my early thirties, but long as you have a source of income, online business or digital nomad, have some savings. You're good, to, good to go. And can't wait to find my Marina. Yeah. Marley, if uh, you're in your early thirties and you've got some income coming in from the West, you know, making Western money dollars, then you're going to do fantastic over here. Cause uh, yeah, that's, that's absolutely so, hey, uh, cop, uh, Copper Penny, I haven't seen you in a while. Jump up on the table, yeah, you, no doubt. <laughs> All right, thoughts, ideas, and what? Hey, take care. Daughter's Ballet via Zoom. Oh, very cool. So, buddy, ha having been bit by a brown recluse and ending up in the hospital for three days due to necrosis, necrosis your fear of spiders is justified. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually, when I was in the army, I was in basic training in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and a, a buddy of mine got bit by a brown recluse and he thought, oh, this is nothing, but same thing. A couple days later, his flesh started to eat away. So they had to, he ended up missing the rest of basic training, had to be what they call recycled, do basic training over again, which completely sucked for him. Uh, David, how is it that Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur can have a better infrastructure than the Philippines? What kind of economy do they have in Kuala Lumpur? Well, one thing is it was part of the British empire until 1957. So, um, that probably has something to do with it. As far as their, um, economy, I, I don't know. I'm not real educated on it yet. I, I wish I was a, little, a bit more educated on it, but I'm not, I, I've just been there twice and, uh, yeah. So, Philip, I was bitten on my face twice while sleeping by a brown recluse. He died. I itched. I'm surprised you, you had more than itch because I'm surprised you didn't have to get into the hospital. 
Yeah, we're gonna have to get you one of those salt shotguns there, a little air powered. Dude, I would I would have totally shot it. If if I had one of those, I would have totally killed it, no problem. <laughs> play the play the horror music, yeah. Being being bit on the face in the middle of the night. That that's some scary stuff right there. Uh, Ken, in America, there are at least three vaccines that are very close to release. Trump has all three being mass produced just to be ready. He also is setting up the military to deliver it rapidly when available. Um, hopefully that, that, uh, hopefully that comes out because that would be a game changer. You know, we'd all be able to travel again. Uh, spider the size of a face hugger from alien. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Alien, I uh, actually I introduced my girlfriend to that movie not too long ago, Alien and Aliens. Um, she actually really, really liked it. Good movies. All right, guys, I'm going to go another 15 minutes, and I'll hit the two-hour mark, and then I am gonna. It'll be midnight here, and I'm going to call it a night. So, any last questions? Uh, get them out. Uh, Lesman, Geo have a home in Davao too. That's where me and my wife are are to get to from the US. Oh, okay. And I, I can see your wife is Filipina. So if you're married, you should, you'll have no problem getting there. Um, I know there are poisonous snakes in the Philippines, poisonous spiders. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are poisonous spiders. There's this one spider that I've seen multiple times out just walking through the jungle and, and it's just these huge webs and it's it's also the size of your face and it's it's like i want it's like yellow and black just yellow markings all the way through it and black um but yeah it's very poisonous i've been told that multiple times so which app is best for dating a western guy michelle there's not really one app that's better than the, than the next. You just never know what, wh where you're going to meet the right guy. Um, for Filipinas, it's a bit easier, you know, but you can try Tagged, Badu, um, Christian Filipina. You can try um, Filipina Cupid. Those are all good. Yeah. The first time I saw a banana spider sitting in her web, I walked directly into her web. I screamed like a schoolgirl and ran to Google if, to, to see if I was going to die. Those things are huge. That's, um, I think that's actually another name for the huntsman is a banana spider. Yeah, they are humongous. Absolutely humongous. Yeah, I don't think it's just me. There's a lot of people. I mean, a spider this size, that freaks people out. So... Fear of the spider club. You have to be bit first. Um, the only way I would be bit by a spider is if I knew I could get the powers of Spider-Man, then, hey, bring it on. You, I'll, I'll let a spider bite me. Geo, never traveled before. I want to live in the Philippines or Kuala Lumpur. Do I have to have a visa after my three-week visit? Um, okay, well, two-part question, Alan. So in the Philippines, you will get 30 days, no visa required. After three weeks, you will have to get a, uh, you'll have to, you can extend your tourist visa in the Philippines. You just uh, go to the Bureau of Immigration, you can extend it 29 days, then you can extend 59 days. Um, in certain cities here, and depending on your age, you can extend out six months, and you can stay all the way up to three years. That's just for a tourist visa. In Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, you get 90 days, no visa required. So you can stay 90 days without having to have a visa. Then you could take a, a bus over to Singapore, stay 24 hours, come back, and the whole process starts again. Six months. After that, you'd probably need to get a visa. So, uh, Gio, you need to get a short sword that glows blue when a large spider is near. I could have used a... a a sword like that. I know exactly what you're talking about. The, uh, was it the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit? One of the two. I think the Hobbit. All 
All right, let's see here. Uh, Gio, my 16-year-old, six foot three son, is terrified of spiders, but can tear you up on the football field. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, I was I was in the army, but um, terrified of uh, spiders, you know. So. Okay, Sean, banking is huge in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, yep, there he goes. A couple people have that banking for their economy, I believe, yeah. Philip, you must have bitten something else first. I guess it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Wow, um, that's crazy. Yeah, I think Chris... Christian Filipinas is, is good for a Filipina because it's the guys have to pay much more than they do on other dating apps. And I think it attracts much more serious guys and not really the, uh, it, not really the less serious. So, so James, I agree a lot. Lots of us guys don't mind single moms at all. As long as you treat the kids and accept them normally, it's golden. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Michael Gio, when are you going to do another cost of living video? I'm hearing the cost is going up there. In your opinion, what's a comfortably comfortable monthly income? Monthly uh, income, or I mean, like a monthly budget? Um, for me, I, typically I'd spend about thirteen hundred US a month, and that's with having a girlfriend. Um, that's not just me myself. And uh, during the lockdown, though, I'm spending about eight hundred and fifty dollars. But I, I am going to do another um, budget or uh, expense video. But I think right now it would be a little bit uh, skewed because, uh, you know, the lockdown. It's not really reflective of what I would normally spend. Uh, Dave, do most Filipinas like durian? How about you and Gang? I don't like durian. Um, Gang, do you like durian? She doesn't really like it so much. Have to stay. We're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, draw life. When is Duma immigration back extending visas? Well, um, <clears throat> it's open right now, but from my understanding, they're only handling emergency uh, visas and stuff right now. Um, I think it'll be back to normal June 1. So we'll see. Okay, let's see here. Uh, David, Gio, my Filipino wife handles all of our money, travel, and shopping needs. She likes for me to go with her everywhere. Um, I push the grocery cart uh, up, plus she's like that. I'm the maintenance guru. <laughs> yeah, I seem to attract spiders. I don't know what it is. The best dating app is Geo's live stream. <laughs> uh, Brian, I was really ill after our trip. I had a Z lump on, on my back. I thought it was just a boil, but I had sores all around my mouth. Went to the doctor. He thought, he said he thought it was a spider bite. Antibiotics work crazy. Um, are there poisonous snakes in the Philippines? There are. You you do have to be careful if you're uh, treading through the jungle. So for sure. So with you scorpions sitting on my bench doing curls last night, a big one crawled in front of my foot. I panicked and slammed it with the weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Malaysia's foreign investment friendly. Philippines is not. Uh, the other thing with Malaysia, Malaysia is also very opening to open to hiring foreigners. Um, they hire a lot of foreigners, a lot of foreigners working in their economy. Phil, my friend years ago had a pet spider. It would jump from table to the couch. I didn't go back. I wouldn't go back either, man. No way. <laughs> yeah, they, they grossed me out. Like seeing people... Um, hold tarantulas uh that to me that's just nasty where else in the world could he take a girl on a trip and have to sign paperwork at the airport promising to return her <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny 
Good thing you don't have a pistol for that spider there. I, no doubt I would have used it. <laughs> of the Hobbit for goblins. That's right. Yep, that's right. Yeah, the fear factor. I remember I remember some episodes of Fear Factor with the spiders. Yeah. No way. You actually love spiders and kept them as a kid, but totally hate roaches. Well, roaches, I think universally, I don't know anybody who says they like roaches. <laughs> roaches are pretty gross, but I'm not afraid of them. I'll just smash them, but they're disgusting. Okay, so Google says the only two spiders in the Philippines that can cause any significant medical issues are the red back widow and the brown widow. Okay, so the one I probably saw was maybe the red back widow because the Filipino kid um, pointed it out and said, hey, this is very poisonous. I was like, wow. Okay, yeah, take care. Take care, guys. So... Jimmy, it sounds like you're pretty frugal, Geo. For many guys living comfortably, it could cost significantly higher, especially if they're looking for a girlfriend. Yeah, well, again, um, I, I, I don't drink. I don't smoke. Um, we do eat out sometimes, but we cook at home a lot as well. Um, I budget travel. You know, I look for the bargains. So, yeah. What's the best way to find a teaching job in Malaysia? Dave's ESL Cafe. That's a good one. Um, the best one is just to go to a Facebook group, uh, um, Malaysian Teaching Jobs. You can find them through there as well. Let's see here. Uh, Ron, my girlfriend found me on Messenger knowing that it might be the best place to meet. Yeah. Well, I met my girlfriend through Facebook. So, hey, how are you doing, Elwood? Good morning. Uh, Ray, do you, do you ever try those glue boards for catching bugs like spiders? No, uh, never tried that. Uh, is there still significant damage to buildings in Davao from last season's earthquakes? Um, well, there's just that one condo that I heard of that, uh, got destroyed, which was right across the street from where I lived. I, I lived at one Oasis and this place was across the street, but, um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty much cleaned up. Are there terror groups, uh, Abu Sayyaf in Malaysia? I don't, I don't know. Um, maybe in some remote parts, but not that I know of. Uh, Brian, my girlfriend told me last trip that cockroaches bite. Is this true, guys, or not? I've never heard of that. Do you have a good line on a good part of Kuala Lumpur to live in? Uh, there's uh, one part that I, there's a lot of good parts, I think, but. Let me see if I can find the name real quick. I'll just Google it. Uh, get, uh, oh, there it is. Get in time. Um, so this is a good area. Bukit. Uh, I, I know I'm not going to say it right, so I'm just going to put in the name there. What's the story on guns in the Philippines? As a foreigner, you cannot uh, own a gun. You can't carry a gun with you. Not drinking saves money for sure, yeah. So glue boards, yeah, I, I, I might. Um, we, might, we might give that a shot, yeah. So I meant not the best place to meet. She is stuck with me now. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Jack, a friend of mine had a big spider and set it next to me. That's why he had one dead instantly. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I'll answer the last couple of questions and uh, say good night. And I won't live stream in the morning. I'll be back on at the same time tomorrow, 10 p.m. So Paul says, I think palmetto bugs can bite there. The roach family, are they in the Philippines? Um, I know palmetto, palmetto bugs are in Florida. I don't know if, I think they might be here too, or a variety of them anyway. Is travel inside the Philippines still restricted? My girlfriend says she cannot travel between cities. Um, it depends if her city is under enhanced community quarantine, general community quarantine, or what. Um, here where I'm at, we are under general community quarantine. So my girlfriend was able to travel two, two hours home to her city. And so that was allowed. Yeah. Yeah, um, Brian, same. Best part for me, mini shops, restaurants, malls, food street, easy access to malls. Yeah, and I think it'd be a good good place to uh, meet girls and stuff too. So, yeah. Still waiting to see a photo of your girlfriend's 25-year-old sister. See if her smile is as beautiful as Michelle's. <laughs> yeah, she's actually quite, quite pretty. She was in the video. She was in my, my one video that I did where I visited my girlfriend's family. She's in the video. So... All right, guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say good night. It's been two hours. It is midnight here. I am going to get some sleep, and I will see you guys next time. All right? Take care. Appreciate uh, everybody showing up for the live stream today. Thank you. See you guys.